Hello everyone, welcome again. Today we are going to talk about fake news and conspiracy theories and for that we have here Thomas with us who will interview him on this topic. Hello Thomas, how are you? Hello, I'm fine and you? I'm really good, uh, thank you very much for coming. It's a pleasure to having you here today. Thank you very much, it's a pleasure for me to be here. So uh, we always start with the same question. Maybe um, if you can do a short presentation of yourself so everybody can know who you are and what are you doing? Well, I'm, um, I'm French. I'm a journalist and a documentary director. And I specialized in, well, what's weird on the internet uh, for the last 10 years. And among what's weird on the internet, well, the main topic was fake news, conspiracy theories. Um, and so I'm, I became some kind of a weird journalist that tracks fake news and fake conspiracy mm -hmm. to denounce them. So how will you define fake news and conspiracy theories and what do they represent in today's context? Well, I would say that there is a difference between false news and fake news. Um, a fake news is something that is intended to be fake and it's intended to, to trick you. So um, false news can be the produce of a mistake and professional journalists happen to sometimes do mistake and publish something that is wrong, that is not a fake news, that is a false news. Fake news is something that's originally intended to mislead people. Um, the best comparison I can make is that if you buy a, a false Louis Vuitton bag, you pay $5 for this on a, on a cheap market, and you know it's fa it's a false bag and you don't care. Mm -hmm. If you've been sold a fake Vuitton, you paid it $3,000 and you're not happy at all. And yeah. so you've been misled, you've been cheated. And I think that the main difference is this. And conspiracy theory is somehow some kind of um, ideological vision of things um, that is very often based on fake news. But that's that imagines that there is something behind the fake news, which is the, the conspiracy to mislead the public and to do some, most of the time, very criminal acts uh, in disguise of some kind of a, a fake government or fake media or fake politicians or fake science. Um, I think that that's it. And uh, you were part of the realization of a documentary called Conspy Hunter. Can you tell us a bit about this documentary and the whole project? Well, in, in 2015, with a, a French media called Spicy, we created a, a project that's called Conspy Hunter. And that started with a, a, a fake video um, that we put on online to see if conspiracy theorists were able to verify information and this this investigative project became a movie and some lots of uh, shorts short videos on the internet to debunk conspiracy theory but it's it's also became some kind of um, a teaching teaching program mm -hmm. and um, it's it, it became a way to do media literacy and critical thinking teaching in schools and apart from my job as a journalist and investigative journalist, I am now became some kind of a, I won't say a teacher, but uh, at least someone who goes to school and try to yeah. educate children about um, conspiracy theory, about critical thinking, and how to, to debunk uh, fake news on the internet. And how do you came out uh, with this idea? Why do you... Um, thought about doing this documentary and what do you think about the results that you obtain? Well, we we wanted to do something to denounce the, the magnitude that was taking <coughs> at that time the conspiracy theory and, and all of these lies on the internet. And so we, we were looking uh, for uh, a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And only denouncing them would not work. Uh, calling them bad work, bad words wouldn't wouldn't work. Uh, calling them fascist would not be enough. Um, and so we 
we, we had the idea to, to test them. So to create a fake and to see if they were going to be able to, to see this fake if, as they pretend to be much better than journalists at tracking fake stuff. Yes. Uh, we wanted we wanted to 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 see how they were going to work, um, and the result was well much big, much more important than what we imagined. And and so we 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 did this we did this thinking that yeah maybe we were going to be able to 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 get a few people to believe in this, but in the end, lots of people believed in it. Uh, some web websites picked it up and. But I would say that the most important thing about this project is not what happened with the film, it's, mm -hmm. it's what happened in schools uh, afterwards and the, the, the huge number of pupils uh, and students that have been um, taking a specific class to learn how to fight fake news. And, and I think that's the, the, most, the thing that I'm the more proud of is more the um, educational part uh, than the the documentary part. So it seems that educating people um, from the beginning in the schools, it's helpful for them to combat and tackle and see what is fake news and what is real news and what is conspiracy theories. Um, so in your opinion, how could the academic world and the education institutions collaborate in the fight against fake news? Well, I say that for sure, Education is, is the only real tool at our disposition, at our disposal to, to fight this phenomenon. Um, we will never find an algorithm that's able to kick out uh, fake news from social networks. And we will never find some kind of a, a computer tool uh, that would be able to say what's true or what's false. The only real tool that we have is our brain. And so training the brain, training the people uh, in, in fighting against and noticing details, noticing why and how something can be uh, said as fake or false, uh, it's very important. And it seems to me that it's going to be very complicated for uh, states to implement this alone because this, this problem is such a big one and it implicates the, um, the fact that we have to, to force social networks to do something. And mm -hmm. one country alone um, is, is really alone facing the tech giants. So yeah. the, the scale of the European Union seemed to me the, the much bigger and much more able to, to do something, to push uh, for um, for uh, political programs or um, or political decisions that would go in the in this in this um, in this way. The problem is that conspiracy theorists uh, already hate European Union and hate everything that's institutional. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure that for them it would be it would be very helpful. But uh, they are a minority. And so for the majority of people who do not believe in crazy stuff, uh, we, should, we should generalize this kind of um, training programs in every country and, and, and push this because education is the only way to fight. Yes. And now also uh, we live in this area that everybody is in social media. We use constantly social media and maybe this is also increasing the spread of fake news. What's your opinion about this? Well, I'd say that um, if news is free, there's a good chance that it's not good news. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it's systematically fake, but it means that uh, producing news, um, it, it costs money. And so um, it means that you, you're going to need some money uh, to, to do it. So if it's free, how do you, how do you pay for it? Yeah. Um, I'd say that the, the second problem of social network is that they, they don't care about the quality of the information. They just care about the, the reach it can get, the audience it can create, um, the time it can get uh, of people online. 
And in this fight for our attention, um, mm -hmm. emotions are much more interesting than reflections. So everything that's emotional works much better than everything that's um, thinking or reflecting or uh, well, uh, lolcats are better than philosophy. And in this new way to distribute news, mm -hmm. well, social media created um, a place where emotional stuff work much better than slow or thinking stuff. And the problem we have is that well, fake news are made of emotional stuff. And so by the, the design, the proper design of social media platforms, it creates some kind of an incentive for lies and fake news. And that's the problem we are facing now. Uh, so we should either force social networks uh, to reveal how their algorithm work, mm -hmm. that would be a, a good start, and or um, force them to change the way they distribute posts. And but for that, we need to have a transparency from their from their part, and they are quite reluctant. So you were talking about the production of news. You are, and you are a journalist. So as a journalist. What would you say are the challenges that journalists is facing? Um, I guess, like for the disinformation. I would say the main challenge that we are facing is that um, disinformation it has a short impact and a long impact. The short impact is that you're going to believe in something that's not true. The long impact is that you're going to doubt about everything, and you're going to to be very critical of institution and among them. Um, big media outlets and I think it, it creates the the condition for for journalists to be in a very difficult position uh, where we have less and less means to do our work every day and in the same time there's there is less and less trust from the public uh, in our work and so in this kind of a weird shape uh, balance. Uh, we are in a very tricky position. I would say that um, the best way to, 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 apart from education, the only real way to fight against this information is fighting free news. Because when you pay to get informed, well, you almost never get disinformed. And that's something that people should have in mind also. Um, when it's free, the product is you. So we should think about this a little bit more before accepting free news that are in fact very expensive for our privacy rights, for example, or, or for um, what we leave behind us on, online. So do you think that also a way that people in their house, in their home can help to combat the fake news is this, to actually pay for the news and not going to the free ones? Well, I'm, I think that um, we, we should have um, I think yes, um, citizens should understand that it's a very important part of their citizenship that to be well informed. And, and so they should accept the fact that by one way or another, we should pay for news. Mm -hmm. I know that it's very difficult. Uh, it's a difficult position for me to say this because I I earn a living by these people paying for news. So I, I seem very interested in the fact that they pay for news. Uh, but um, when I'm saying that, I'm more thinking as a citizen, as mm -hmm. uh, I am thinking as a journalist. I mean, it's not it's it's not well. If you go to the supermarket, tomatoes are not free. If they yeah. would be free, they would be very bad or at least you would not be able to check their quality. Well, fake news is the same problem. Um, at some point, things cost money. Uh, we could imagine living in another world where things are free and it's great, uh, but that's not the world we're living in. And so we, we should really we should realize that um, the price we pay, it's not only a cost for us, it's also a, a, a guarantee uh, for um, a good service and mm -hmm. if you pay to get news and you are misinformed 
well, you won't buy the newspaper the day after. And so um, the newspaper doesn't have any interest in lying to you. So that, that's this trust relationship that we should recreate. And in a capitalist society, uh, trust is given by the money we pay. Uh, so if we don't pay money, there's no trust. Yes. And a part of that, maybe, do you think there's other ways to identify fake news? Well, I think th there's a good advice that uh, that we try to, to give children in in schools. It's not only for fake news, but it's when you see a post on a social network, before thinking if it's true or if it's false, try to think who this post is trying to make you hate. Mm -hmm. And yes. the time you you think about this question, well, you re you will realize that this post might not be uh, as true as you thought. And what's true is that we need time. Uh, fact checking stuff it takes time. Uh, verifying stuff it takes time. Uh, so, in France, we have a, a saying that um, before you talk, you have to to turn your, your tongue seven times in your mouth so that you have the time yeah. to think about what you're doing. Well, we could say that um, we should uh, move the, the thumb uh, seven times over the smartphone before we swipe or before we like, so that we, we recreate this time where we can think. Mm -hmm. And when we think, well, it's harder to trick us. Yeah, because also I think this is really important because in social media, also it's really easy to share the stuff super quick. So if you don't really verify or think about, is this actually true? You're also helping in spreading this maybe possible fake news. Of course, and people should start by reading mm -hmm. what they share. 60% yes. of what's shared on social networks is not read by the people who share it. So that should be some, some way, some kind of an incentive. But I, I, Twitter I created some kind of a tool that when you want to retweet something, And that's, mm -hmm. for example, an article. Uh, Twitter tells you, well, um, it seems you didn't have the time to read the article. Oh, okay. I didn't do, knew do that. You really want, do you really want to tweet this? Mm -hmm. And I think it's a very good tool. Yeah, it's like a step we are improving now. Yeah, because you know that every newspaper article now, um, it has a, um, a reading time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you know that it's seven minutes to read the article or stuff like that. So between the time you you are exposed to this article and the time you, re, you retweet, if it's shorter than the time of the article, they propose to you this kind of feature. I think it's not a bad idea. No, I think it's a really good idea, actually. Yeah. So it, that... it forces social network to slow down the, the process they are the most interested in, mm -hmm. which is viral, viral stuff. Yeah. They need stuff to be viral. And That's so they need true. things to go, to go quick. Yeah, so it's a conflict of interest. Exactly. Hmm. Um, so I think we're <coughs> kind of running out of time. So I'm yes. just going to the last question that we also do everybody. It's really simple. Um, do you have any final message or advice for the people watching this interview? Mm, I would say that the, the most difficult stuff about fake news and conspiracy theory is that it often starts with something we believe in, something mm -hmm. that's not totally fake. Uh, in every lie, there's a part of truth. And that's this small part of truth that always tricks us into believing in fake stuff. Um, so I think that the, the best thing, the best advice we could give to people is to, to take time. Uh, time is your, your best ally because it allows you to create the, the moment to think about stuff. And with this reflection, well, you can find the, the way to, to solve the problems you're facing. So I think that um, the best tool would be to, to create some time and to, to give people the possibility to, to, to think about what they're doing. Yeah, really nice advice. I actually learned a lot also with this interview. I think it was really interesting. So thank, thank you, you again. Much. Thank you again for coming here today.